All right, hey, it's good you could join us today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a balcony ticket. <laughs> All right. It's not bad. Okay. Two methods of magnetizing. Two <laughs> methods. Did we say F? I didn't. No. Okay. Oh, hysteresis loop was F. So, but I talked about it. You want me to write notes on that? No. All right. All right. Because if I do, you're not going home early, which is keep asking. <laughs> Two methods of magnetizing. Two methods of magnetizing. What are those two methods? Current. Well, uh, direct. Direct, which is where current is passed. <coughs> passed directly through the part. If I'm using a Magnaflux magnetic particle bench, that would be called a bench shot. Bench shot. Which produces what kind of magnetism? If I, what's my other type here? Indirect. Indirect, where current is passed through a coil that creates a magnetic field, and that field is then passed on to the part. So current <coughs> is passed through a coil that creates a magnetic <coughs> field. This field, this field passes through the part. Passes through the part. Um, on the bench, this would be called a coil shot or longitudinal magnetization. Longitudinal. G H. All right. Different magnetizing currents. All right, we have AC. It is hot. Just open the door so Krista can leave early. <laughs> There's a door. <coughs> it's open. Don't have to clock out. I got a download mark for this thing. All right, AC or alternating current. Uh-oh. Missing the tire page. Alright, due to skin effect. <laughs> maximum lines of flux are produced on the surface. Alright. Um, well, let me just tell you about this, then I kind of write about it. So we have AC and we have DC, really is how we can combine them in the, into the two. Uh, oh, there we go. I was thinking, hey, I didn't even write DC, but yes, I do have DC. So AC and DC. So the machine that I used when I did engines was strictly an AC machine because back in the day, it's just that's how they wired them, right? You either bought one that was AC or you bought one that was DC. I'm not aware of any of the old machines that had the ability to switch back and forth. Maybe they did, but mine was just AC. Then I come here and you guys, you saw the red one that we got rid of that didn't work. That was strictly a DC machine. There was no AC to it. Um, we did have a very small one set up for a while. Uh, max I could get out of that thing was maybe five, 600 amps on a good day. That one did have both, uh, but it was Oh, very analog. You had to pull wires out of it and plug wires into something else to get it to work. So 
with AC, alternating current, they call it the skin effect. Or what I, I like to say is the magnetism sort of floats to the surface. And so if all the magnetism floats to the surface, it's really good at detecting what? Surface, surface cracks. Surface cracks. And so why, why would I want a machine that is better at surface cracks versus a DC, which magnetizing all the way through it, um, so it's much better at subsurface. Now you can think, well, why doesn't it detect surface? It does detect surface, but AC also adds, adds one little thing to it, and it adds what, what we call uh, uh, mobility. Um, let's say product, product mobility. Is product the word I want to use? <coughs> Part, particle. Particle mobility. That's the word I want. I knew it was a P word. So particle mobility, which means that it causes those little particles that are in the magnetic juice there, if you will, to kind of dance around. And if they're mobile, they will then work their way towards any flux leakage and give you a better indication. So AC, um, skin effect, plus uh, mobility of the particles. Then we have DC, which then, of course, is going to lose the skin effect, and it's also going to lose that mobility. But it really sinks in deep. So I think everybody's had a chance to see the keto ring demonstration. So you can see it really goes deep. Who has not done the magnetic particle yet. One, two, three, three, four, okay. So most of, you, most of you have seen that in action. But you see we also got the first indication on the keto ring too, right? So we have the skin effect and the mobility, which really helps. So that's why you choose that. So if you were, now our new machine of course does both, but let's go back in the day. Which machine would you want to buy? Okay, just define. If you're doing like air framing, maybe do AC. Doing what air framing? Yeah, like skin, like aluminum skinning and stuff. Aluminum doesn't work as well as you would think in a Magnaflex uh, yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, we would just take an entire aircraft, just put it in there. Yeah, you are huge, man. You should see the pads and put it right up on the nose, and put another one on the tail, just. <laughs> Of course, you want a thousand amps per square inch, and I don't know, a, thirty some feet, so it's just fifty thousand amps. We we melted a lot of planes those back in those days. Really played hell on those uh, fiberglass radomes too. <laughs> yeah, so, anyway, uh, pick on the poor guy for trying. The rest of you guys are just <laughs> not even engaged. All right. <laughs> No, I'm just going to make fun of you. My favorite is when people ask me, can I ask a dumb question? But none of you do that. I said I'm going to ask you a dumb question. I know, but nobody says, can I ask a dumb question? Can I ask you a dumb question? Better than anybody I know. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'll have to edit that out, too. It would depend on your process, like if you're manufacturing parts. Okay, if you're manufacturing parts. And you're doing, like, cast parts, you don't want any imperfections inside. Right. You're, you're very concerned about inside imperfections, if you're, especially if you're manufacturing. So that would make sense. I'm really going to be focusing deep inside this thing. So a manufacturer does that. They're worried about inclusions deep inside, pockets, porosity. And so they certify and say, okay, this product is going out into the field. We've inspected it using, um, if all they had was DC, DC, and it goes out. Because it does do surface and it does do subsurface. Now it gets out there in the field. It's been operating for a thousand hours. It's taken apart. Where is the crack likely to occur? Deep inside or on the surface? On the surface. On the surface. So AC would make sense there. So subsurface is anything like a quarter inch in? Um, at least I no. It could be what is defined as subsurface. Anything under the surface, not open to the top. But the question becomes, how far can I detect with Magnaflux? It's one thing to do a keto ring and say, look at that, I can see damn near a half inch or an inch down. It's a whole other thing to be looking at a complex part and be able to see something a half inch down and go, oh, I keep getting this little fuzz right here. Well, Although yeah, it does happen. I have found it. The keto ring is a smooth piece of metal. So it's smooth and I already know where the yeah, holes yeah, are. Yeah. So it's what we call confirmation bias. It's like, look, there's going to be an indication right there. Oh, look, there is. Mm -hmm. It's because you're already looking for it and knew it was going to show up there. It's a whole other <laughs> thing to be in your fourth hour in a black room and haven't seen a single crack yet, you're looking at a complex part and like, whoa, 
there's like a fuzzy line that appears there, and you know, yeah, probably, nothing. probably nothing. Just wipe it yeah, off. No, it went away. Uh, so due to skin effect, maximum. Maximum lines of flux <laughs> are produced on the surface. So that means that one, two, a C works great for surface flaws. Works great for surface. Laws. The pore at detecting subsurface, deep subsurface, deep subsurface. What is deep? I'm going to say anything over eighth of an inch, which isn't very deep, but it's it's down there. It starts to get hard, and it makes it harder for you to find them produces best indications because it causes the particles <coughs> to dance about. And we call that vertical <coughs> mobility. And I'm talking about the particles inside of the magnetic particle detection fluid or powder. All right, we have DC, which stands for? <coughs> works best for subsurface flaws I don't want to say it doesn't work well for surface discontinuities it works fine it really does you've seen that it's just not as sensitive so we go from go from oh as I say in my house I have one daughter who's very quick to throw away any food it's like look at that oh, throw it away it's expired I'm like let me see that it says best when used by twelve twelve <laughs> so it went from best to just that's right so I'm saying today so she would pull out the menu say look I'm throwing it away I'm saying why are you throwing it away. It says right there it expired. It didn't say expired. It says best when used by 1212. So it went from best to good. It's still good. I'm, I'm the exact same. Five days after the best five day? Something like that? No, it went from best to good in another couple weeks. So it will go from good to acceptable. From acceptable to just feed it. To <laughs> I'm throwing it away at least two days before. Half wave DC. So that's half wave DC. Exactly. They, they also make, make these versions half wave. Uh, DC, which is where you take the AC and pull out the bottom loop. Um, is that half wave? Half wave. Half wave. Half? Yeah, half wave. <laughs> wow. Because I couldn't get you to stop talking about the stupid mayonnaise and the milk over there. You were thinking about that movie, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'd never seen that, actually. It's a good it's a nice title. Let's get here tomorrow. <laughs> Full <laughs> wave DC. <laughs> Disney XXX. <laughs> oh, you have it. <laughs> Three phase, three phase AC and three phase rectified.
All right, so, so all of these, half wave DC, um, full wave DC, and three phase, produce similar results. to DC, so different types of machines. <coughs> All right, media types. What are my different media types? Christian? Yeah, sand, walnut shell, glass, glass garnet. garnet. Um, pixie dust. <laughs> Might as well. Pixie dust. Did you say Bluebird news. Are you talking about what to you or what not? I wasn't talking about any of this. So I'm just letting him go for a minute while I just kind of rest here. What are we talking about, Christian? What is our subject? Media types. Of what? Uh, you know what? I'm just happy he didn't say Hulu, <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> no. We're doing Magnaflux stuff here, magnetic particle inspections. So we have the wet type, the wet type media. Now, it, when we talk about the media, so you remember we did dry and wet, so that's going to be the other one. The other one's going to be dry, Christian, you remember that. So, now, What's the other one? Dry. Dry, okay. The first one is wet, so we can do wet or dry media. So the way our magnetic particle booth is set up, it does have a hopper in there with a magnetoglow carrier to and some, some iron filings in there that are uh, colored to uh, be fluorescent under a black light, right? I don't have to use that. I could just as easily use dry powder in the machine if I wanted to. In fact, I, they even have prepared bath in a, in a rattle can. Just you know, shake it up and spray it. I got a whole bunch of those. We didn't need to fill that bath or do anything. Can don't. it mix with the, the water stuff? Or is it, that's not water. It? Remember, that's... Well, okay. it's in the bath. Can yes. It mix with, and it'll be fine? The dry powder? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Oh. That doesn't sound like a good... Well, I suppose it could. I mean, I mean, because then... You would have to have it set up specifically for that. One, set up one or the other, yes. Yeah. I don't know if it would. I'm a big proponent of not mixing things that shouldn't be mixed, so I'm going to say no on that one. That sounds like a bad idea. So the wet media is suspended in an oil or water bath. <coughs> Ours is oil or water? Oil and water. Whatever. What's what? Be wrong with using a water bath. Yes, then I'm then I'm worried about corrosion. The thing I like about the the Magnaglow carrier that we're using is that it's nice rust preventative. I don't. Uh, maybe visible. Which comes in black or fluorescent. I've never used that stuff. Is that the used motor oil? Possibly. <laughs> Selling it at a premium. Wet is the primary media for fixed equipment. Meaning not portable. Meaning I don't mean broken. Yeah. Is the dry less sensitive than the? Yeah. <laughs> um. It's kind of a yes or no kind of a yes or no. It's kind of a. Let me see. Yes and. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah kind of a yes and no kind of a thing. Um, I want to remember what the the actual official answer is. See, the thing is you have to think about product mobility. And I think I had a problem with this when I was going through the, the school. 
what is going to move easier and faster, a particle in oil or a particle in air? In the air. So then, which you're right. So then we would say that the dry has a higher mobility. Yeah, yeah, so this is the, that's the, I was, telling you, I was trying to remember back to why I had a problem with this. So I think one of the test questions is about which one has more, more mobility, and they might have even worded at which one is more sensitive, and the answer ended up being dry, but I said wet because, yeah, the wet is, a, is smaller, it's easier to apply, it, it's uh, easier to see. It's like everything about it is better and easier to me, but yet the answer on this test ended up being dry. And I think it was just for, simply because they said it's more mobile. For the dry, would you you'd basically have to like put it in a small container, fit like fog the container and then yeah. magnetize it? No, didn't you or, do the dry with me? Well, no, but for the mobility aspect. Yeah. No, it's in the yeah. air. Yeah, but wouldn't it have to be a, like a high concentration in the air? Because it's going to have to... I suppose. But you just have to... Trust me that the answer was higher mobility because it was in the air. So, but I say that the wet is more sensitive. It's just, it's so much, for the reasons I said, it's so much easier. Maybe I'm wrong about that one, but I'm going to go with that. So, wet is the primary media for fixed equipment and maybe in a bath or in an aerosol can. Aerosol. Now you guys are the first group to go through in a ever because when I went through the program back in the late 80s 90s we still had the red Magnaflux machine and it still didn't work it didn't work back then I mean I think the power worked but the bath didn't work it was still missing and the headstocks didn't work like I push on the button and ours you guys are whoa I'm like yeah yeah that's what it's supposed to be but uh, when I went through the program, that thread one still didn't work well. It was already broken. So up until now, I've just been telling people, hey, trust me, there really are nice machines out there with this bath in there, a little hose and everything. And uh, we've been using the aerosol cans, which there is an advantage to using an aerosol can. Um, well, okay, so there's two things in think about. One, it, it might be cheaper, at least, you know, to get started. Uh, it is more mobile because uh, you can carry a can with you. It's hard to carry that Magnaflux machine because it's two tons. Um, but process control. I have to worry about my bath every time I use it being of the right concentration and contamination. The prepared bath that comes in aerosol can is the proper concentration right out of the can. It's the same stuff. Did you have to worry? Does it have a time limit on how long you have to shake it? Or? I just give it to a student and tell them to shake it until I come back. That's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a drawback. You have to sit there shaking the stupid thing. Where the machine, I can just turn on the pump and go have a beer and come back. And all right, then we have the dry powder, the dry. So media is a fine. Powder. It's not too fine. How you doing? You're fine. It's not like that, but <laughs> usually a color that provides high contrast. So I know there's gray, yellow. Um, red, blue, so pick your color. I think I have, blue. I have white. I have white, which is probably gray. Uh, we have white, red, and blue here, but I just always use the red. Why would gray be a good contrast color? What if you're using a dark part? Gray, like light gray. Oh, like primer? Yeah. All right, media properties. What are the media properties there, Christian? Sand, we got. No, just teasing you. 
All right, so we were tasked with developing these uh, these <laughs> fine little particles that are go in either the the, the magna glow carrier or the, the fine dry powder. What magnetic properties would we use to describe what we want to use? So uh, would we want something that has a um, higher low retentivity? <coughs> The particles, the little particles that are going to show us where the crack is. Low retentivity so that you can reuse them. All right, so low retentivity. What if they had a really high retentivity? No. No. Hey, we just pull out a big clump of them out of the bottom of the thing. Like, I have a big crack. <laughs> just, all right, so we got to, what did I say? I was talking about retentivity. So we want low retentivity. Because we don't want them to all stick together. As soon as the magnetizing force is removed and we demagnetize, we'd like these things to kind of slide off a little bit um, and not clump all together. That would be kind of bad. So what does that say about its permeability? Okay. All right. So given that, we can talk about the operating principle. of the bench system, not the portable. All right, so everybody good? You caught up there? He's not freaking out, so. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Meds are working? Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. <coughs> trying to reboot. So the bench, I'll just call it a bench. So magnetic particle bench has both, both what? AC and DC. Um, no, not a lot of them don't. Only the new nice ones do. As a coil. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, what's the other thing? Conductive and contacts. So I have my choice, right? The operator. That's you. Controls. The amount of current. That flows to either the coil or contacts. <coughs> Not so funny story. Everything has to be calibrated. So when we're using our magnetic particle machine, and I'm looking at that little readout, and it tells me how many amps I have, that has to be calibrated, right? Because you can't just guess and go, well, it was probably right when it was new. And so every year, somebody has to come in and, and calibrate these machines if you're going to use them to return stuff to service and verify that the, the meter is accurate reading based upon the magnetic particle machine. And... We had our Magnaflux machine serviced and calibrated. And after the guy left, it didn't sound the same. And I complained for about a week that it sounded different. There was something not right about it. And you know, I'd bring everybody, come listen to that. See, that's not right. And everybody go, man, you are really spending too much time in the dark here. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this machine. I called the guy who did it, man, something's not right. Now you are absolutely fine. And um, so I, I think that was right about the time when I started uh, changing things. We got a level three and I got the ketos ring. It just happened, we got lucky. So I did the ketos ring and I was doing something and realized <coughs> either that, that and I think a, a, I had a camshaft in the headstock and I did a coil shot and the pads arced. I'm like, wait a minute, if I'm doing a coil shark and the shot and the shark, and the pads are arcing at me, that means I've got, I'm doing both yeah. coil and the heads yeah. at the same time. Yeah, it's, actually, it, it, yeah, I could hear it. The situation, can you do both at the same time? Not supposed to, but my because machine suddenly was. Three That's huh? a good machine. Coil, here, <laughs> and together. What? In standard, you have three. Yeah, multi-directional. Uh, no, our machine won't do it. My machine wouldn't. 
In fact, it had a giant lever on it. Contacts, chunk coil. I mean, it was a manual switch it. But, uh, I, man, I got the guy to come in, and, yeah, he was kind of, oh, yeah, I guess I kind of screwed up a little bit. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> what did he do? I don't know. He didn't admit. He didn't tell me what he did, but it was. I think it was almost like one of those, no, no, it's fine, but let me just check something down here and move this wire here and do that. And, yeah, try it now. How's it work? Well, that sounds different, and it acts different. Yeah, no, it's 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 fine. It's working well. <laughs> I had, I that I had another piece of equipment. This is way off. This so you, you can write that one down. I guess tally this one. That's it. But we had this really cool machine called the Tobin Arp that was used for line boring connecting rod bushings. And it has made the most perfect connecting rods in the world, it really did. And, it would, and we would get them down to 10 thousandths of an inch and they were guaranteed perfectly parallel and um, where twist and convergence was absolutely 100% perfect. Even if the rod was twisted, this thing would bore straight through based on the big ends. It was, they were awesome. And I had to have this tool, this comparator, and I had it calibrate it and then it, it didn't work for like years after that. I mean we took it apart and it, we could almost never get it back together right. The guy broke it but finally we got it right. It like, um, so don't let things get calibrated if it doesn't need to be. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't need to be, think it through. That's the point. Of, think it through. Magnaflux machine does need to be calibrated um, but at the same time like if you read the manual for it, it tells you how to calibrate it. You could do it yourself, provided you have the tools that are calibrated. So one of the checks is you get an ohmmeter, voltometer, and you pads, and you check it, and cross check, and so there are ways to do it. So if you can, so anyway, make sure things work. All right, so uh, coil and contacts, uh, you control both the current that flows to either the coil or the contacts. I'm not aware of any machine that does them both at the same time. I don't think I'd even want to do that because um, it doesn't make sense to me. And the reason why is That's because, the what's that? That's what you need. And uh, there you go. Let me see. Let's look here. Okay, so if I'm doing what we could call a headshot, and the nice thing about calling it a headshot is you don't have to really think much through. The headshot, and everybody knows, oh, you're using contact pads and you're putting it this way, right? But a headshot also creates what kind of magnetism? Circular. Circular. I'm like, wait a minute. So he's not using the circle to create the circular and this kind of thing. So I can say headshot, and everybody goes, okay, he knows headshot. And I also just said, what kind of magnetism? And you said circular. 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 So everybody's on the same page, and now I can just do it. So, um, so it is going to, the indication is parallel to the line, to the current that is applied. So current is coming through here and look, oh, it's parallel, right? Um, so what I'm going to get really here is I'm gonna get indications here up to and including an indication that may go about 45 degrees to that. Fair enough? And everybody got to see the pie gauge? Yeah. That demonstration, I love that pie gauge. All right, so here I am with the coil shot. So the coil shot produces what kind of magnetism? Longitudinal. 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 All right, so, and it goes parallel to the current. Hold still, yeah, because current's going this way, and the crack is parallel to the current. So I'm gonna get a crack here with indications up to and including this way. So if I have, oh, let me see if I can do the red. Red is my coil, and then I'll make blue something. It was my, oh, I should do green. I should hate it when I do that. All right, so if I did um, a headshot, my crack is up to and including this way. So why would I want to do both at the same time? What, what possible good would that do for me? I get a star. I get two stars is what I get. That's, so no, I don't want that to happen. You could just do it once you get it done twice as fast. I know. It's like, man, I will, I will cross these two wires right here, and I will just have this done in 10 minutes. All right, so somebody who is smarter than I am, which is most everybody, figured out that you don't, you don't want to do them simultaneously. I'm assuming that if you simultaneous 
was an option and it was a good option, the machine that we just bought that is brand new would have that option because it has every other option. You don't have the auto feature. It's an auto bath? Yeah, because yeah, I can do it myself. So. Huh? That's my thought. That they're gonna they're gonna compete and not well I don't want to stay. So anyway, not not a good thing. Oh yeah, you're gonna hate that. Okay. Um, there's maths coming. <laughs> there is maths coming. Stand by. All right, so let's talk about a headshot. Who are my Fortnite fans? <laughs> yeah. well, my no. sons play it. Apparently, headshots a good thing. So, all right. So, headshot. This is where the part is clamped into the heads, and the current is passed through the part. So, um, part is clamped into the heads. Actually, it's a headstock and tailstock, but heads and current is passed through it, and current. Is passed <coughs> through the part. Is this direct or indirect magnetization? Direct. direct. All right. So the right hand rule of thumb. And again, I don't know. It doesn't matter to me if it's right or left hand because it's going to give you the same thing, really. Right hand rule of thumb shows that as current is passed through the part, the lines of flux will circle around the part, which is to say the right hand rule of thumb, your thumb points in the direction of current flow, and it tells you which way the lines of flux are going to go. It's going to go in a circle. Well, okay, is it right or left? You know what? Guess what? It looks the same. It doesn't matter. It's going like that. So don't worry about it. But right hand rule of thumb shows shows, what does it show? Um, that current as that as current is passed through the part the lines of flux will circle it. Lines of flux circle the part. Thus the name. What kind of magnetization is that? Circular. So this is circular magnetization. Now, who are you guys getting ready? You ain't going anywhere. You're going to be 10 minutes for every time Christian asks how long we're going home early. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> Just because we're going home at midnight, <coughs> in two minutes, we're going to use that hour. <coughs> they mean just Christian. After hours, doesn't work. Flaws will be <coughs> detected. Christian, have you seen phone level jacket? Detected <laughs> parallel. Don't they beat them with a sack? So, it's going to be you. To the longitudinal axis. You wouldn't know about that <laughs> And so that we're not confused with longitudinal axis, that is also, also <coughs> parallel to the current flow. So if you were to put a part in sideways, you have a big up and down. <laughs> well, you had an odd shaped part, you somehow managed to get in there weird. Uh, and you say, well, wait a minute, you know, I put it in this weird, but this is longitudinal, but I put it this way, it's, it's gonna show up parallel to the lines of flux. This is what, or parallel to the current flux. What is it gonna do? So you don't have to get too confused about that. <coughs> All right, I guess. Don't go away, man. Just go away.